In this video, I am ranking every single Call of Duty Zombies weapon from worst to best. Please note that this video is entirely subjective and my own opinion, and if you think otherwise on any of these weapons, you can go f*** yourself. Or, you know, just debate in the comments. So let's just jump right into this ranking. Coming in at last place, we have the Testocular Tickling Device. This piece of shit is only on Verruckt and takes a minimum of two shots to get a single zombie kill. The Arasaki is essentially just the slightly less shitty version of the Springfield. This is only due to the higher headshot multiplier it has. Also, make sure you guys stick around till the end of the video as I'm positive number one one will surprise you. The MR6 falls to the bottom of the starting pistols just because it is the least OG of the three weapons. The M19 falls just above the MR6 because it is literally my dad. The Mauser is the best of the starter pistols solely due to the fact that it turns into a Reagan Mark II when it is pack-a-punched. The car on paper is complete dog shit and it should be ranked lower on this list, but I had to rank it higher solely due to the fact that it has a scope version in Nocturne Toten. The SMR is overall a horrible weapon with no accuracy. The Shiva on the other hand is overall a horrible weapon, but it has accuracy. The Ballista really should not be this low on the list, but unfortunately, Treyarch did it dirty in the Zombies game mode. Also, I forgot to mention that this video does not include Black Ops 4 as I do not own it, and it doesn't include Cold War because the weapon system is so different. The Bloodhound is so powerful that it should not even be a starting weapon. The China Lake is the first Black Ops 1 weapon to make this list. The Remington Shotgun is so bad that it feels like it should be a starting room wall buy. The War Machine would be at the bottom of this list, but it's overpowered when you pack a punch it. The Spectre SMG has decent damage, but the lack of ammo really holds it back from soaring. In my eyes, the Guru is the worst of the World at War starting rifles. The M1 Garand is only a slightly better alternative to the Guer. The Cap 40 is another one of those weapons that's really powerful, but it gets held back due to its lack of ammo. I believe the B23R is one of the best weapons for early game zombies. In my opinion, the Pharaoh is actually a very solid weapon, even though the community universally hates it. The PM63, on the other hand, is only slightly better than the Spectre, mostly because it becomes a Kimbo when you pack a punch it. The Carbine falls to the best of the World at War starter rifles solely due to the fact that it becomes automatic when you pack a punch it. The Barrett is an absolute tank when it comes to damage per second, but it falls low on this list solely due to its lack of ammo and its insanely bad recoil. I literally have no idea what to say about the Elkar other than it's below mid at best. The RK5 has complete W Riz and he could probably steal your girl. The Stakeout is another dog shit shotgun that is only slightly better than the Remington as showcased before. I'm honestly not sure why the Olympia is this high on my list. The Ballistic Knife only holds this place on the list as it is used to revive teammates when it's pack-a-punch. The M14 is obviously superior to the Olympia, but comment below which you guys are in. Olympia or M14 gang. The trench gun from World at War is the first shotgun on this list that I actually consider to be pretty decent, but it still just doesn't hold up against many other weapons that are on this list. The Panzer Shrek is overall a very strong weapon that I would normally rate higher in any other circumstance. The only problem here is the fact that World at War explosives decide that they're going to kill you rather than kill any zombies in your way. I think most people would agree that the FAL isn't inherently a bad weapon by any means, but it holds my number 116th place on the list because it's not a weapon that anyone would go out of their way to get. Overall, the CZ is mid, but it will always have a special place in my heart. The MX Grand is Black Ops 3's far more superior re-edition of World at War's M1 Grand. This weapon is literally just a bootleg version of the Type 100. The Cheekum is one of my favorite burst weapons, but unfortunately it has like no ammo in its reserves. The S12 was also a really good idea for a shotgun, but unfortunately it lacks in the ammo department as well. The Argus is one of those weapons that I used to hate, but while recording for this video has definitely started to grow on me a little bit. The M1216 is one of the best shotguns throughout Black Ops 2, but like most things in Black Ops 2, it once again lacks in the ammo department. Recording this video has made me realize that Treyarch made all of the old zombie shotguns mid at best. The Gorgon is the first LMG to make it on my list and that is for good reason. It is abominably shit. The M16 is the first weapon on this list to reach the C tier. Everything before this has been absolutely F tier and a piece of shit. The Type 25 is an amazing weapon choice but the recoil on the weapon personally makes me want to enjoy a nice long nap on some train tracks. The Bar is one of the most underrated weapons of all time but unfortunately it just doesn't stack up well against the other AR choices. The G11 would be way higher on this list if they would just remove the scope, kind of like the plane removed my dad on September 11th. The MP5K is a decent SMG for Black Ops 1, but unfortunately Black Ops 1 has the most mid weapons of all time. The MPL is better than the MP5K only because I said so, so go cope. The number 100 place goes to the L96A1 sniper, and as much as I love the sniper, I sadly have to make it the lowest ranked sniper on my list. This is just because it isn't quite as powerful as any of the other snipers on here. The HK21 is absolutely dog shit, unless of course it's paired with stamina up for better movement speed and double tap in hopes to increase the fire rate. The FAMAS is another amazing weapon, but unfortunately, it's incredibly fast fire rate makes it run out of ammo quicker than my dad ran out of the hospital on my birthday. The FG42 probably deserves a higher spot on my list, but I hate the weapon so f***. 
The RPD is a very powerful weapon, but it's overall one of the worst LMGs and by far the worst LMG in any of Black Ops 2. The M8A1 is the first weapon on my list to touch into the beats here. It's overall a very solid weapon and one of the best burst rifles throughout all of Call of Duty. The M8A7 is Black Ops 3's re-endition of the M8A1 and like most things in Black Ops 3, it is once again superior to the M8A1. The Type 100 is a solid weapon overall, but I find that it lacks when it competes with the other World at War weapons just because they're so overpowered. The HG40 is just the adopted brother to the much superior MP40. The 5.7 is by far the best non-revolver type pistols we have ever seen in COD Zombies. The Akimbo 5.7s is just double the fun, kind of like having Akimbo children in your basement. Having the MP40 this low on my list is going to be controversial, but I honestly think it is one of the most overrated weapons of all time. The SVG should not be this high on my list, but my Discord server was actually trolling when they were helping me write the script for this video. The Uzi is criminally overrated, and once again, this is entirely my Discord's fault for placing it this high on the list. The Black Ops 2 MP5 is overall a well-rounded weapon from its movement speed all the way to its damage output. The PDW is an SMG that is absolutely goaded with the sauce. The RPK is mainly so low on this list just because it lacks mobility. I have literally never went out of my way to use the BRM, but it's honestly not that bad of a weapon choice. The STG is a great weapon, but I honestly prefer the Black Ops 2 version from Origins. The MTAR is goaded and it would be way higher on this list if only it had slightly better recoil control. The Banshee looks and feels like it would make an amazing weapon, but it's honestly the biggest disappointment of COD history. The Executioner is the worst revolver throughout zombies. The Scorpion is powerful and overall accurate, but I believe its fast fire rate actually deters from the weapon's skills. The AK-74U is one of the strongest weapons throughout Black Ops 1, but as newer games started to release, it began to fall off. The Tommy Gun has a really fast fire rate, but the damage drop off doesn't allow for it to hold a higher place on my list. The Weevil is a bit weaker than some weapons that I've already listed, but it gets bumped up due to its large magazine size of 50 rounds. The Pack Punch Spaz is by far the most satisfying weapon I've ever played with. The PTRS hits like a truck, but its lack of mobility keeps it behind some of the other snipers on this list. The Remington new model is basically an old western version of the Python revolver from Black Ops 1. The M27 is opening the A tier weapons for us on this list. This weapon is amazing and it sucks that they never brought it back to any maps other than Nuketown. The KSG shotgun is subjectively the best throughout all of Black Ops 2 zombies. The Thompson is by far the best submachine gun wall buy in World at War. Also it's ranked number 69 on this list which is quite nice. The double barrel is one of the best shotguns ever and it would be much higher on this list if it wouldn't be a double barrel shotgun. The XM53 is the core launcher in Black Ops 3 but I believe it is a a little bit worse than launches from the previous titles such as the RPG or the Law. The Law is only a slightly better alternative to the XM53. This on the other hand is a magnificent piece of art that is by far superior to the two previous weapons. The Magnum hits zombies harder than I beat my ex-wife. The crazy thing is is that the L4 Siege hits zombies even harder than that. The VMP feels like it's that basic white girl version of a wall weapon in Black Ops 3. I'm pretty sure I get pregnant every single time I end up in the same room as the Vesper. I literally have nothing to say about the Cuda, it's just a completely versatile weapon that's good in almost any situation. Situation. The Man of War is absolutely dog shit and I would have ranked it down where the Spectre is but I let my Discord decide instead and its ranking has totally failed me. This is literally my first time ever using the Peacekeeper but it feels like a pretty solid weapon choice to me. This weapon is just by far a superior remake to Black Ops 1's infamous FAMAS. We all need to give the Browning a round of applause for being the first LMG to make it into the A tier on my list. The AUG with ACOG is another weapon that is absolutely goaded with the sauce. I'm going to start a debate for you guys in the comments, vote what you guys think is better, the AUG or the Commando. The KRM on Pack a punch is already a very powerful weapon, but now put it in the pack a punch and you're pretty much unstoppable up until round 40. I honestly have never touched the Razorback, so I'm hoping this is a good place for it on my list. The KN44 is Black Ops 3's version of the AK, and it honestly does a pretty good job of holding up the standard of the AK. Unfortunately, nothing can top the original AK-47, and I'm honestly surprised it took Treyarch so long to add this beauty into zombies. The Yelsat is the first Black Ops 2 LMG to actually be a decent weapon choice in zombies. The minigun from Mob of the Dead would be way higher on this list if it wouldn't burn through ammo so damn fast. The Dingo is going to be the filler weapon that keeps pushing us forward through these LMGs. The 48 Dredge is by far the best LMG in Black Ops 3 and if you disagree you probably have no friends. I would literally walk barefoot on razor blades just to be able to use the HVK one more time. The Hammer has no right being above the HVK but unfortunately my discord server has an average IQ of about 3.7. The Dragonov is also ranked number 44 because apparently I am my discord server and cannot fucking count. The Rift 9 is actually a good energy weapon, kind of like what you would expect when you pick up the Banshee for the first time. The ICR is probably the best assault rifle in all of Black Ops 3. The Python being this high on my list is probably going to be controversial, but I truly believe that it does deserve this ranking. The Draken is overpowered as shit, and if you do not believe me, go camp the catwalk on the giant with it and then try to make an argument that it's not. Even though the Draken is broken, the Locust still takes the cake for the best sniper in Black Ops 3. With a weapon as iconic as the Galil, there's literally no way I could have ranked it any lower on this list. Running around town with the Iron Sights DSR is one of my best memories from growing up. This sniper truly had an impact on the 
the zombies community. The AN-94 is the first weapon on this list to start us off with S tier weapons. Literally no one dislikes this thing. The MG-08 from Origins is an amazing weapon, but I personally don't like it just because it is an LMG. The Brecky is living proof that Black Ops 3 shotguns are way too overpowered. I honestly have never used the Marshals, but I am told that they are broken as shit. The MG-42 is the only LMG on this list that I would actually go out of my way to use. The SVU is overall the best sniper throughout COD Zombies history and it's for a good reason. The Haymaker makes it to the top of my shotguns list. This is because it is a full auto shotgun that still has the power of the other shotguns before it. Everybody saw it coming, but the PPSH makes it to the top of our SMGs on this list. This thing has a rate of fire of 896 rounds per minute, it's equipped with a huge magazine, high damage output, and the highest headshot multiplier of any other SMG in COD Zombies. Placing the scar above the PPSH might be controversial, but this thing truly is the best non-wonder weapon style weapon on this list. When it's pack punched, it literally two shots the panzer on any round. The tiny ice cube blaster is complete dog shit for a wonder weapon, but you are lying to yourself if you think it places below the normal weapons in zombies. If you've made it this far into the video, subscribe for a free ray gun in your next game of COD Zombies. The scavenger is one of the coolest wonder weapon concepts we've ever seen in zombies. It's a bolt action sniper that has an explosive plasma wave. Unfortunately though, it just falls short in comparison to most other wonder weapons on this list. The crossbow is this high on my list because when it's pack a punch, the monkey bomb effect is usually a get out of jail free card. The Rega Mark II is the superior re addition to the ray gun and it's most notable for its 21.7 times headshot multiplier. The VR-11 in solo is one of the worst weapons we have ever seen in zombies, but in co-op, when pack a punch, it has the ability to grant your teammates a temporary insta-kill effect. The Paralyzer has infinite ammo, so technically it has unlimited damage, but the reality is that you will most likely never kill a zombie with it on round 100. Also, it lets you fly around, so it's kind of crucial for high rounding on Buried by Jug. Everyone's least favorite wonder weapon isn't even that bad, as it is one of the few weapons that actually do unlimited damage. Unfortunately though, if you kill 12.6 zombies with it, it ends up breaking and you need to go recollect all of the parts in order to put it back together. The flamethrower is essentially the same thing as the jet gun in the fact that it has unlimited damage, but it's better than the jet gun because you aren't forced to build the piece of shit. The ventralic withering has the same effect as the upgraded crossbow, but it actually does damage and has ammo in the other case. It's common knowledge that the wolf bow is the worst of the four bow choices. I personally don't think it's that bad, but I would take almost any of the other bows instead of it. The void bow is only a slightly better alternative to the wolf bow. The lightning staff is the worst of the four staffs as it almost does no damage once you get into the higher rounds. The Reagan Mark III's ability to create black holes is great, but unfortunately the weapon just ends up falling off by round 60 plus. The fire bow is a completely viable wonder weapon, but the quest to unlock it is relatively challenging. The fire staff is amazing, but it ends up making your gram crash usually before you reach round 100. The wind staff is the only staff that actually does unlimited damage. It only falls short on this list due to the, its minimal ammo it has. The lightning bow is the first weapon on this list to crack the top 10. I think this spot is well earned as it is the weapon that carries any round 100 attempts under Eisendrak. I've never actually used the KT4, but I was told that it's just a slightly watered down version of the Slickle Fire, which is why it is this high on the list. The Slickle Fire's ability to chain onto multiple zombies makes it very powerful for high rounding, and it would probably be higher on my list, but unfortunately it doesn't actually do unlimited damage. The Ice Staff's charge shots allow for the weapon to do very well up until about round 120. Everybody saw it coming that this would be the best ranked Ice Staff on my list. The Wonder Wolf was the first unlimited damage wonder weapon that Treyarch ever released, and even to this day it never disappoints, except of course when it steals your jug on World at War Darius. The Thunder Gun released shortly after the Wonder Wolf, and it's essentially the same thing, but it doesn't have a limit to how many zombies one shot can kill. The Wave Gun is above the Thunder Gun because it has the same effects as the Thunder Gun plus the dual with its zap guns that come alongside it. The Apothecan Servant shoots black holes that insta kill anything in its radius, meaning it can technically kill more than 24 zombies per shot. Also know that if you die while you're holding this thing, you are definitely terrible at video games. The JGB Baby Gun is above the last few weapons because its abundance of ammo actually allows for it to kill the most amount of zombies out of any weapon. The all time best weapon of Call of Duty Zombies is Abyssus Hades from his custom zombies map Forgotten Halloween. It's essentially just the Hades shotgun with an insanely high fire rate. If you guys did enjoy this video, I think you'll also enjoy this challenge I did on World at War Darius right here.